pleasure to be here. I was tired and exhausted because I moderated a couple of sessions since morning. We were handling this event show since last couple of days with my team. But the moment I saw him, you know, sometime back we went to receive him. Look at him, the fit athlete here, and you can see how energetic it is to feel even, you know, what does it mean to be in the sports, right? So glad to have you, sir, and it's my pleasure to be here. Thank you, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. So since the whole conference is about innovation and the whole world is talking about innovation, specifically the BFSI companies, and in fact, we are honoring the winners. We have done a remarkable job in the innovation. I have only two to three questions specifically about innovation and victory, because he's victorious, no doubt about it. And so Mr. Bindra, to begin with, tell us, what does innovation mean to you? Well, I think for me, innovation is really about a mindset. I think innovation is about having the mindset of an explorer, because you know you need to have creativity um, uh, to be innovative. Uh, that, I think, is, is, is very important. You have to remain curious. Uh, that, I think, is very important. But how do you inculcate this mindset? It's not that one fine day you go to work and say, "Na, mujhe innovative hona hai. It is something that you have to almost inculcate in your day-to-day -day living, right? Uh, innovation is part and parcel of life. Uh, it is like a muscle. Uh, if you practice it, it becomes stronger. If you don't use it, it becomes weaker. So you have to learn to find innovation in your day-to-day -day lives. It's about whether you get bored in your, day, in your daily run that you go early in the morning and it is getting boring. How do you innovate to make it more fun and interesting? Whether it is about innovating to um, find or continue to find meaning in relationships, you have to learn to innovate there. So for me, it is really about having that curiosity and, and having that openness uh, in mindset uh, to, to be innovative. I think for me personally, um, you know, innovation was part and parcel of my own career and part and parcel of my own sport. And for me, my innovations came from the strangest of places. Um, you know, for example, my sport required two very important things. It required me to remain calm and it required a lot of balance. Uh, and I learned these two things uh, from A, a deep sea diver. I learned breathing techniques from a deep sea diver. Uh, and I learned balance from a downhill skier. Uh, and these were you know, very innovative ways to, to get better as a shooter. Uh, but it is really about remaining open-minded, um, about being willing to, to change as well, because I think innovation and change uh, is, is quite closely linked. Um, and having the ability to change, you know, of course, when you're, when you're faced with challenges, tab to innovate karna hi padta hai and you have to change but also having the courage to continue to innovate and perhaps even continue to change uh, when the going is good. Uh, that requires a tremendous amount of courage, but that also requires an openness and mindset to be able to do that. So for me, for me personally, innovation is really about a mindset uh, that you have to almost employ in life. Yeah, sure, uh, remarkable points, uh, Mr. Bindra. So, if you could also add, how does actually innovation helps to achieve your goals or maybe, you know, be a victorious, you know, achieve uh, whatever you desire, if you want to add maybe one or two, your example also. Oh, so, my, I mean, I'll go back to my sporting career and uh, I'll give you, I don't know what examples can I give. Okay, I'll give you an example. So, I won the gold medal in the Beijing uh, Olympic Games um, and the Beijing Olympic f shooting range was this very massive space. Uh, it was this massive hall that these Chinese had built with a capacity of, I don't know, 30,000 people to come and watch uh, shoot. And, you know, shooting is a sport where, you know, the space where you're standing in, you, uh, uh, you have to be very comfortable with that because balance and all comes from references uh, in the room. If, if it's a very large space, you know, you lose orientation sometimes. So how did I innovate? Uh, I innovated by hiring a shadi hall. Uh, very close to my house uh, and converted that into a shooting range. Uh, it was almost the same as the Beijing uh, shooting range that I built at home, uh, built in this uh, marriage hall. And that, by the way, is the closest I've also come to marriage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but it, was, it was about finding innovation. It was, fi it was having the ability to find out-of-box solutions. Right. Uh, whether it was, you know, uh, sometimes in my, when I went to the 2004 Olympics, I had suffered a very 
bad failure in 2004. And they, uh, one of the reasons why I failed was that the floor I was standing on had a loose tile under f un uh, underneath, which yeah. moved every time I picked up the rifle. And that made it almost impossible for me to perform well. Yeah. So the, one of the first things I did when I came back home was install a loose tile in my shooting range. Right. And I started practicing on it. Uh, whether it was, <laughs> at that time, ammunition, you know, ch I mean, for my sport, uh, I mean, the quality of ammunition was very, very important. Right. Before Beijing, the Chinese manufactured the best ammunition in the world. They opened a factory only for the Beijing Olympics uh, for their athletes uh, to make this high-grade ammunition. And of course, they didn't sell it to anybody else. <laughs> so I managed to get it from a friend in Hong Kong. So I almost had to become kind of a smuggler to get it in. But uh, I managed to get it. So it was finding innovation, find looking for out-of-the-box solutions all the time. No detail was small enough to ignore. Right. Uh, so it was, wow. you know, innovation and I think attention to detail are also quite uh, closely linked. Mm. Wow. No small details to ignore is a great lesson. And imagine a shooter in the marriage hall. <laughs> Nobody will dare to enter there, <laughs> right? So. <laughs> sure. <laughs> So I've given one good idea at least. <laughs> yeah, sure. So uh, let me move ahead, Mr. Bindra. And, uh, and on the background of award winners, we have lots of them here. Uh, we would like you to share your experience in terms of what does victory mean for you? How should leaders, winners carry the victory? And any advice for those who perhaps don't or didn't make it this time? Well, those are hard questions. But I think for me, victory, uh, victory really means about showing up, showing up every single day, about trying to be better than what you were yesterday. Victory to me is about finding self-respect. It's about having the ability at the end of every day to look yourself into the mirror and ask yourself the question, have I done my best today? And on days when you've said, yes, I put in my best, that is victory. Uh, and I think if you put enough, put enough of such days, you will achieve the outcomes that you, that you desire. But for me personally, it is really about giving your own best every single day. It is about falling in love with the boring and the mundane uh, because, you know, victory really requires you to do the boring and the mundane uh, to, a, to a very high degree. Uh, about success and failure, I think for me personally, success was really about learning to fail well because I failed most of my career. Uh, and it was about learning from failure, about learning to let go of the unwanted baggage that failure brings but learning from each experience and, and, and trying to become better. Uh, of course, I think when you fail, you're disappointed, but I think, and it's normal and human to feel disappointment, but I think equally important is to learn from that experience and to get back on the saddle and again, try to be the best that you can be. I think when you have success, that also comes with a set of unique challenges. Dealing with success, I believe, is even harder than dealing with failure because I think sustaining success is, is something which is quite hard. Um, and I, I think when you do succeed, I think um, you, know, you, you, you climb a peak, right? And, and, and I think human nature really is that you want to jump to the next peak. Uh, but in reality in life is that, you, is that you have to climb that peak down and then one step at a time work again. I think failure and success also, you have to also have the self-awareness of how you're feeling as a human being. Uh, I think that is something very, very important to keep in mind because both experiences um, you know, are also draining in nature. So you also have to have the self-awareness uh, to manage your own energy levels well because sometimes when you achieve big goals or when you fail, you, you also uh, you know, drain a lot of your, your reserves and a lot of your energy. So having the self-awareness to manage your energies well, I think is critical which is sometimes to be, we don't pay enough attention to. Right. Uh, very, very remarkable points there, managing your energy. But you want to also, before I move on to my last question, also want to add maybe one or two points in terms of how should winners carry the success going ahead? Because then the responsibility is more on their shoulder. Well, I think, I think when you, I think sometimes when you succeed, you also become defensive. Um, I think uh, one thing is important to, uh, learn is that you're going to defend, there is no title that you're going to defend. When you start again, you start as equals, you start from zero. 
I think that that is an inspiration you can take from sport. You know, you might uh, win a gold medal at the Olympic Games, but the next race that you start, you start as equals. It is really about going back to the basics, even after big successes, plugging the gaps that may have, uh, you know, come into play uh, when you have succeeded, uh, and and really. Uh, really remaining focused to the process and trying to improve the process, I think that is something which is very, very important. There is absolutely no finish line to greatness, so you have to keep going. Sure. And uh, uh, my last question, maybe you can you know, enlighten us with that. Uh, uh, so many of you perhaps don't know that Mr. Bindra has also business initiatives. And uh, you know, I was talking to him before coming here, and he told me that he had two lives. One was an athlete, and after that, I mean, obviously he's always an athlete, but one was after retiring from, you know, what he was doing. So you got into the, you have a great experience of business segment as well. You entered into, you know, a business. Ag again, it's obviously related to sports, but tell us about the challenges that you faced because you didn't have a background of business as such. You knew the sports very well. So how did you manage with it and uh, manage the challenges and how did you overcome with those challenges? Well, I, I think, Firstly, I had to make a own transition to my mindset. Uh, you know, I performed, uh, when I was an athlete, uh, it was all about myself, right? And the world revolved around me. When I went into work life, suddenly the world did not revolve around me anymore. So I had to learn a new dynamic. Uh, and, and I think that was something which is interesting. But in whatever I do, I think I take inspiration from whatever I learned uh, uh, from the field of play. It is the values that I imbibe through sport which remain true to even the business that I do. Um, you know, sport taught me many things. Uh, it, 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 you know, Olympic values, for example, are about uh, excellence. It, they are about respect. They are about friendship. Uh, and those are things which remain very true to uh, what I do in, 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 in work. You know, sport teaches you teamwork. It teaches you uh, honesty. It teaches you integrity. And those are the values which uh, I, I, I really look, I look to whenever I'm challenged. You know, of course, there is failure, there is success, but it is about really being process-oriented. Um, yes, there are certain outcomes that I want to achieve, mm -hmm. uh, but it is about also learning to find detachment from those outcomes and really trying to just focus on, on, on the process. And these are all things that I learned um, uh, as an athlete. And these are all things that I try and, and really put into play uh, in, in, in work life. And, and you know, whenever I'm challenged, uh, and there are several challenges uh, 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 almost on a daily basis, I look back uh, uh, to, to my life as an athlete and, and how I managed crisis at that point of time and see what parallels I can draw uh, and use uh, in my current day life. But it is also about not living in the past you know, sometimes, you know, I, I achieved good successes in, in um, or reasonable success as an athlete, but it is not about living in the past. For me to move on from the, uh, move on in life, it is also about burning my past to a certain degree. And that is what I have, uh, I think I have managed to do uh, reasonably well. I have to have the humility to, to, to embark on a new journey and, and uh, embark on it and, and move ahead in it step by step. Sure, maybe. Uh, I still wanted to ask a couple of questions, but the time is limited. But I still have one minute, so let me give opportunity to someone in the audience. If somebody has one quick question, anyone? <laughs> okay, Mr. Agrawal. He's also one of our jury, and he's the one, first one who raised the hand. Thank you for very uh, great The mic is there, yeah. You first had an individual gold medal by an Indian, and that, that, that was, and I remember the day I literally lost my towel after the shower when I heard that news. <laughs> So my question to is that what was your reaction when this feat was once again repeated by Neeraj Chopra recently, although in a different sport altogether? I was absolutely delighted. You know, it was very, very lonely at the top, and I was very, very happy that he won. Uh, and I, I <laughs> more, more power to more athletes, and I really, really hope that come Paris, we have even more people joining this fairly small club at the moment, only two individual gold medalists from this country, I think. We deserve 100 at least. Sure. So that's it, friends. Uh, we can't wait more for the uh, winners to receive their awards from none other than Mr. Bindra. So I will ask Fraser to start the next proceedings. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Bindra, for sharing those insights. Thank you. Thank you.